Today, I'm talking with Ian from Caffili Athletic Football Club. So Ian, tell us a bit about your role and what you do within the club. At the moment, I'm the first team manager. I'm also involved in the committee. I was a player for over 10 years at the club under the, the old manager. Who uh, he, he took the team from a Sunday team to a very successful Saturday team. He climbed right up the leagues and uh, he decided to step away with working away and family commitments. And I, I took over then. Yeah, and now I'm involved in the committee and from everything from day to day running to involved in the accounts, looking for sponsorship like yourselves, to the, the match day tactics, do a bit of everything, really, the dog's body, even wash the kit. So when Reese told me that uh, he'd had conversations with yourselves at CFS and you were willing to get on board, I thought it, it, it made sense. You were looking to put back into the community. We really appreciated it. We like to put, get back into the community ourselves. And I think our home pitch in Mong Jones Park is probably a stone throw away from the CFS office. A sponsorship like that you've given us, it's absolutely priceless in the local game. Obviously, we don't have a home pitch where we can charge people to come in. We don't have a bar and a clubhouse where we can make money back. So we're really reliant on, on local sponsorship like yourselves. and. Can't thank me enough for it, really. So you mentioned how much you put into the local community. How, how much does that mean to you as a club? And personally, we took the initiative from companies like yourselves, where you know what you, what you do as a business doesn't really integrate with a football team. But the fact that you were willing to to give back has given us the initiative to what can we do? You know, not financially, but what can we do to put back into the community? So we've run a couple of schemes where you've donated twice to the Toy Box Foundation, it's running Caffili, where all our players brought in old toys. We did the ball throw, we bought 100 brand new green, Philly green, Nike footballs and give them to children that wanted to bring any old ball as tennis ball, rugby ball, they could swap it for a brand new football. We donated over 80 Easter eggs to the children's hospital up in Enneglin. The old balls from the balls for all. We donated those old footballs to a dog's home so the dogs could play with them. We ran a clothes bank for four months. So it's all stuff that, you know, we didn't have any money to give, but all the boys come together. We've recently just run um, a school uniform campaign where all the boys donated, that was cash. And then Reese Watley, a member of the management team, he went out, bought the uniform and gave it to the uniform bank so they could donate it to people less fortunate. But it's, you know, you've got the ideas from companies like yourselves. Oh, that's Sounds fantastic. So do you feel the sponsorship that you receive has an impact on the, the team? Massive, absolutely massive. From what we're trying to do at Caffili, at the moment, we won the league last year and now we're just one level under the Welsh League. But obviously, as we don't pay anyone financially, we do we try and go the extra mile where you know all the kits, I mean, nice kits every season. We record the games on a VO camera, which is expensive. Every player has a GPS, which obviously costs. So without sponsorship, we wouldn't be able to record the games. We wouldn't be able to track the GPS, afford new kits every season. Then what makes us different from every other club? So I think the benefit of having your companies like yourself sponsoring us, let us go the extra mile, because we're not trying to invest in the pitch because we haven't got one. So what can we do to gain the edge? And yeah, you know, it's just not possible without local sponsorship. So I've actually got one of the, the trackers here, which the sponsorship from CFS has helped us uh, invest in. So these. These go in like a it's like a bra, really, like a tight top. It goes in the back and it gives us everything from number of sprints, distance covered, how many accelerations, decelerations. So, so much data that, you know, I'm just scratching the surface, really. But the, again, it get, brings us back to like our uh, beliefs as a club, accountability, and there's nowhere to hide. And so, yeah, literally GPS, there's nowhere to hide, track everything. So, can you tell us like what plans, what, what's, what's coming up with for Athletic? So, in the last just touch on the last 18 months, two seasons, we've gone from, yeah, having you know, 10 senior players. Now we've got a first team, a second team, over 60 players registered. We've got a multiple age groups from under six, we're up to under, th under 13. So we're working on a, a women's team at the moment. So yeah, lots in the pipeline. At the moment, we're trying to work with the FAW and Philly Council to try and find a place where we can call home. You know, if we can get uh, preferential use or like a long-term lease, and then we can develop that as a going back to a community hub. We're, you know, because at the moment we're playing games at Western Manach. If Morgan Jones unplayable at the moment, it's cricket season, so we've had to play our home games at Western Manach, which then again costs money. Which stuff like, unless we have local sponsorship, it's not. We, you know, we can't afford these pitches, and we just have to play every game away. But yeah, lots in the pipeline. We're hoping to challenge, be there or thereabouts this season. Hopefully, go up, and then we'll be in the the Welsh League, the the Ardle. That's the goal. Obviously, it's a lot of work to do, and um, there's a lot of very good teams. But yeah, those are. 
the plans, short-term plans. So Ian, tell us what you know about CFS or, or funerals in general. So yeah, I know uh, one of the boys actually lost a relative last season and he was, he had nothing but good things to say. The fact he was able to come and carry on with the season. Not as if nothing had happened, but as if the the weight of arranging a funeral, dealing with a funeral, would, I'm, that'd be a lot to me. So if I could go with a company like yourselves, because I know you personally, a very empathetic person. So Ian, can you tell me if you know of anything about direct unattended cremations at all? I don't. I've never heard of anyone unattending a cremation before, no. So a, a direct unattended cremation has become more and more popular mm -hmm. with um, people who've lost a loved one. So a direct unattended cremation where a, a big national company, your loved one's taken to a crematorium, for instance, in, in southern England, and you're then given back from it to means at a later date. So the, the main difference is between us and them. So we can offer, for instance, if a family want to come in and pay their respects in the full home prior to that, we can offer that service. And also at a later date, say a family wants us to arrange or attend a burial or scattering of cremated remains, that's something we can look after and guide them through that, mm. that process as well. So thanks so much for your time today. No, thank really you. informative. Mm. Can you tell us where we'll find um, up and coming uh, events or more information about Cafe Athletic? Yeah, so we are on all three main social media platforms. We don't have TikTok, we're not that cool. But uh, we've got Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all at uh, Cafe Athletic. Just search. But yeah, thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Thanks a lot.